Attorney Liban. Uh, Justice Mendoza. Yeah, I defer to uh, Justice Abad. I Justice ask, Abad. Justice Abad. I will okay, ask Justice questions, Abad. please. Counsel, you said that the RH law constitutes, or the con contraception constitutes about 80% of the RH law. And, uh, con and uh, related, you related to the right to life and the right to health of women. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. I want to be clarified. This relates to the constitutional right to life and the right to health that happens to be important to the Catholic tenets, as far as I know. No? That's the right to life, that's why you have their pro-life. Yes, Your Honor. And the, the right to health, because the body is the uh, temple of the Holy Spirit, according to the Catholic tenets. Now, my understanding is that there are three ways of preventing the birth of a human being. The first is by preventing the woman's ovary from ovulating or producing ova or eggs. Is that right? That's correct. Huh? The second is by preventing the sperm from fertilizing the ovum. Is That's that right? correct, yes. And the third is by abortion after the ovum has been fertilized. Right? That's, co That's correct. No. Yeah. Of these three, actually that was discussed only at the last hearing, it is abortion that uh, the Constitution prohibits. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. There is abortion when the ovum is prevented from being implanted in the womb. Correct? That's correct, Your Honor. There is also abortion when after implantation in the womb, it is prevented from developing into a fetus. Yes, Your Honor. Or if a fetus develops, abortion kills it before it is delivered alive by its mother. Correct? Yes, Your Honor. Does the Constitution prohibit abortion? I yes, think that was one where we lingered. On. It does, no? It prohibits. The RH law does not, on its face, support abortion. Is that correct? On its face? On its face, yes. In fact, it prohibits the government from sponsoring the use of abortive patients that cause abortion. Right? That's correct, Your Honor. On its face. We say that the second and third ways of preventing birth is by preventing ovulation, and if this is not achieved, by avoiding fertilization of the ovum. These are made possible through the use of contraceptives. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, Your Honor. Now, contraceptives can be in form of birth control pills that women can take at prescribed times and dosages. Is that right? Yes, to prevent... Uh... Or, or injectables with effects that last for about two months, from what I read from some literature. Yes, Your Honor. Or birth control part patches that last seven days, from what I read also. Do you Even longer, that? Your Honor. Or barriers like condoms, diaphragms, and contraceptive sponges that prevent the meeting of the sperm and the ovum. Yes, Your Honor. Correct? No. Or intrauterine devices planted in the womb that last five to ten years. They ensnare and kill foreign organisms like the sperm foreign to the woman. That's okay? good. Yes, Your Honor. These contraceptives either prevent ovulation or avoid fertilization of the ovum. Yes? Yes, Your Honor. With contraceptives, a man and a woman can have sex and not have a baby, right? That's the idea, yeah. This is not abortion. Uh, before the fertilization? Right. Yes, this is yes, not abortion. So we can say that avoiding ovulation and fertilization by themselves are not prohibited by the Constitution. Is that correct? That's by correct, yeah. That's correct, yeah. Now, but apart from guaranteeing the right to life of the unborn child, the Constitution also guarantees the right to life of the mother. It says in Section 12, Article 2, the state shall equally protect the life of the mother and the life of the unborn from conception. 
You're aware of that? I'm aware of that, Your Honor. Some say that this is the justification for therapeutic abortion where pregnancy threatens the mother's life and abortion has to be done to save her. No? But that's that point. At any rate, it says equally protect the life of the mother and the life of the unborn child. I will read it again. The state shall equally protect the life of the mother and the life of the unborn. It does not say the life of the woman and the life of the unborn. Rather, it says the life of the mother and the life of the unborn. Correct? That's correct, yeah. So the right to life of the unborn child and the right to life of the mother are connected rights. Yes, you agree. In effect, the Constitution guarantees the right of the unborn to be a child of her mother and the right of the woman to be a mother or have a child. Correct? I agree, Your Honor. Now, but there, there is another constitutional right that women enjoy in common with men. The right to health. Do you know that? I yes, think you I mentioned do, that. Your Honor. Let me read to you Section 15 of Article 2. It says, The state shall protect and promote the right to health of the people. This is not just about the right of women to health, but more about the duty of the state to protect and promote her health. You understand that? Yes, Your Honor. As Webster defines the term, health means physical and mental well-being. Freedom from disease, from pain or defect. Health means normalcy of physical functions. So this is what the government or the state has a duty to promote and protect. Is that right? That's correct, Your Honor. Women like men have the right to health. Correct? Correct. Now I notice that the RH law favors used by women of the full range of modern family planning methods, right? Yes, Your Honor. The strategy, from my sense, is to use the full powers of government to make this possible, correct? Correct, Your Honor. So Section 9 of the RH law declares, without qualms or reservation, that hormonal contraceptives, intrauterine devices, and injectables are safe for women's use. It declares it to be safe by law. You agree with that? Yeah, uh, from the language, Your Honor, that's correct. Indeed. Oh. And that they are non aborti patient. That's also what the law says. These com com uh, contraceptives are non aborti patient. Correct? Yes, Your Honor. Indeed, Section 9 directs the inclusion of this range of contraceptives in the National Drug Formulary. Is that right? That's, that's correct, Your Honor. Now, paragraph 7 of Section 3 of the Generics Act of 1988 states that the National Drug Formulary also constitutes the country's essential drug list. Yes, no? Your Honor. That means that these uh, contracep contraceptives that the law declares as safe go into the essential drug list of the country, correct? Correct, Your Honor. The RH law compels all public health facilities to provide a full range of modern medical family planning. It also compels private health facilities, with certain exceptions, to provide the same services to paying patients. You agree? That's what the law says. Those who are exempt must, according to you, endorse people seeking these services to those who are willing to provide them. That's right. I'm not willing to kill your, to prevent your ovary from producing ovum. You go to, to him because uh, he will do it for you. That, that's the way, how it looks, isn't it? It looks to be that way, Your Honor. Now, all in all, the RH law decrees a massive use of contraceptives that prevent ovulation and fertilization in women to control birth as part of its family planning program, right? Right, Your Honor. Now, the bottom line question, it seems to me, is whether or not in adopting the core strategy of minimizing birth 
by interfering with the normal functions of women's reproductive organs, the RH law fulfills its constitutional duty to adequately protect their life, their right to life and to help. Do you agree with that? I think uh, the, the law violates uh, that particular constitutional provision or mandate to protect the health of the people. That's correct, Your Honor. Well, so the, the issue is whether this law, does, it, does this law contain enough protection to women that to, pre, to promote and protect their right to life and their right to health? That's the question, I think. You agree with that? Uh, if you're asking, Your Honor, if uh, the law provides for mechanisms to... Uh... No, no, no. The issue, whether this is the central issue in this case. Do you agree that the central issue in this case is whether or not uh, in adopting this strategy of minimizing birth by interfering with the normal functions of women's reproductive organs, the RH law fulfills its constitutional duty it, has, it contains provisions that adequately protect their right to life and to health. No, I don't think so, Your Honor. Hmm? I think the law, uh, one, does not uh, provide for safety mechanisms. Number two, and the more important core uh, point is that it is not the business of the state to be the primary mover, initiator, funder, promoter, and distributor of these potentially harmful drugs and devices. Because that violates yeah. Section Does 15. the law pro provide protection against those practices? I, I don't see anything of that sort, Your Honor. Yeah, that's why I'm saying that is the issue. Partly the issue, from my point of view, is that this law does not protect the right, as, as the duty of the state, protect the right of women to life and to health. You agree? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Now, now, who has the burden of proving that the RH law adequately protects the women's right to life and to health? I think Would it should be. Would you care to venture? My, my view, Your Honor, is that since the constitutional duty to protect the health of the people is directed to the state, the state must have that, uh, ju that uh, obligation and burden. Right, it must show that it has complied with the duty. duty. I have not found in my research any provision of the Constitution of other countries that forbids abortion. As a matter of fact, I don't think there is any single country in the world where the Constitution forbids abortion. I don't know. If you can find one, you let me know. But I tried to find, but there's none. So it's unique to us, you know. It's unique to us that our Constitution forbids abortion. That's how important we consider it now. And also, the, it guarantees women's right to live, have a child, and be healthy. There's none in other constitutions like this. Okay. This is uniquely Filipino, a part of our deep value, values, and enshrined by covenant of the people in their constitution. Do you agree? I agree, Your Honor. In contrast, the Constitution adopts six basic principles and 22 state policies in Article 2, yet nowhere does it regard as one of its basic principles or state policies the adoption of family planning or birth control. That is not in the Constitution. Yes, Your Honor. In fact, uh, if, you see? if memory serves, so, it so was... <laughs> well, consequently, in pursuing birth control, the government bears the heavy burden of showing that its strategy of interfering with the normal functions of women's reproductive organs adequately protects their rights to life and to health. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. Government supplied contraceptives should not permanently impair the right of women to have children, even if they use it, should not permanently impair the right to have children. Correct? Correct, Your Honor. The women's ovaries should be able to recover fully from whatever chemical mambo-jumbo they are subjected to. Correct? Correct, Your Honor. Further, the use of contraceptives should not result in the birth of children with physical or mental deformities. The state's duty is to guard against all of this, correct? Correct, Your Honor. Now, for the right to life of the child includes the right to a normal 
healthy life not as what they call it, uh, as an imbecile or one with no arm or no eyes or things like that no? right. now right. is the supreme court by the way a trier of facts because that is an issue that uh, we have to co- no, deal with the but it's not you know but can the supreme court in cases before it take juni- judicial notice of facts that are self evident yes your honor uh, if uh, there is universal notoriety, Your Honor, it, yes. uh, yeah, the law allows you Section to take Section 2 notice. of Rule 129 of the Rules of Evidence provides that a court may take judicial notice of matters which are capable of unquestionable demonstration or self-evidence. Have you heard of this rule? Yes, I have, Your Honor. Now, take the case of hormonal contraceptives. Admittedly, they are not human hormones no they are synthetic hormones mixture of chemical compounds that are ingested in the woman's body correct correct your honor one group of manufacturers claim that their hormonal contraceptives can prevent women's ovum from producing ova or egg cells are you aware of this i'm aware of that yeah with these contraceptives if the sperm arrives at the, at the woman's ovary it will find no ova or eggs, preventing fertilization that normally would generate human life. Correct? Correct, Your Honor. Now, another group of manufacturers claim that their hormonal contraceptives induce the release of thick mucus that will prevent the sperm from penetrating the ovary. Are you aware of that? I'm aware of that, Your Honor. Right. Would you say that the court needs medical expertise to determine that hormonal contraceptives in fact disrupt normal functions of the woman's ovary. Take this, uh, take this uh, reasoning. Can the court by logic and common sense make such determination? As we said, the makers of these contraceptives themselves claim that their products can stop healthy ovaries from producing ova or eggs or can induce them to produce thick mucus that will stop sperm penetration, correct? Correct, Your Honor. With these claims, manufacturers actually admit that their contraceptives disrupt the normal functioning of women's healthy ovaries, correct? Correct, Your Honor. I have healthy eyes. If uh, they will use chemical to make my eyes unhealthy, I will not be able to see. No? So the chemical will be interfering with the normal function of my eyes, correct? Correct. Okay. When they take no contraceptives, women's ovaries produce eggs. No contraceptives. Women's ovaries produce eggs that sperm can fertilize, right? Right, Your Honor. But when they take certain contraceptives, women's ovaries cease to produce eggs. That's what they claim, right? Right, Your Honor. The ovaries become dysfunctional, correct? Correct, Your Honor. Subjected to other contraceptives, ovaries release thick mucus that are normally not there, blocking sperm penetration, right? Right, Your Honor. So admittedly, contraceptives attack healthy ovaries to make them dysfunctional, and reject fertilization. The court need only, only common sense, not medical expertise, to see this truth based on the claims of the manufacturers themselves. Now, to protect women's right to life and to health, the government, as you said, favored contraceptives. Is that required? That's, that's true, yeah. Now, well, but to protect women's right it is necessary that those contraceptives should be safe. Because if they are unsafe, they cannot protect the lives and the rights of women, correct? That's correct, Your Honor. So contraceptives have to be safe. Unsafe okay. contraceptives will violate the right of women to life and to health, correct? Unsafe, you mean, Your Honor? Yes. The term safe, according to Webster, means free from damage danger or injury. So hormonal contraceptives may be considered safe if they pose no damage or danger or injury to women who use them. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. 
Can the court determine by unquestionable demonstration, needing no trial, that hormonal contraceptives are safe or not safe? What do you think? That might be a question of fact, Your Honor, but uh, insofar as the risk, the presence of health risk is concerned, I well, think uh, that is something within the, which the this my suggestion is, is My suggestion is simpler. All one needs to do is buy such contraceptives from the drugstore and read from the insert the best things that manufacturers can say about their products. I will read from the insert of one of the most popular oral contraceptive in the Philippines, the trust pill, pill. Trust, ibig magtiwala ka, ibig sabihin, trust pill. Manufactured, uh, that bears the generic name ethinyl estradiol, lebonogestrel, you remember this word, the lebonogestrel, because this is a subject of a later point that I'm going to make, and perus pumarate. This drug is manufactured in Thailand, of all places, by Pants Chemical. I don't know if it's related to the Pants that makes the cream. Imported by DKT Philippines of Libis, Quezon City. I will just read the pertinent portions because the insert is quite long. It says, prior to starting this trust pill, pregnancy must be ruled out. However, should pregnancy occur while taking the tablet, minum ka na nito no, for a number of days, and pregnancy occur, it says, the administration has to be withdrawn at once. That's what the manufacturer says. No? Stop using it. So what does this imply? No other but that unless take, taking of this pill is stopped, the pill will harm the child in the womb. Huh? The pill will harm the child in the womb. This tells us that this pill, a hormonal pill, declared as safe and non aborty patient by the law, is after all a double barrel pill. It pursues the ovum to prevent ovulation and then shoots the zygote or little junior if fertilization takes place. Hmm? Abortion, is that right? That's right. But the woman taking the pill cannot know. And I ask all the women here, cannot know that she has become pregnant unless she sees or feels the signs of pregnancy. Unfortunately, from what I read, this feels must such signs. And women using the pill, if you're a pill user, you're assured by it, by this, the, by this pill. Let me see, I have the box here. This one. I also have this. You are assured by it that the pill will prevent pregnancy. So there's no basis for, for you to take pregnancy tests on a daily basis to find out if you are pregnant. The woman has a right to keep the child. No, in case of pregnancy, despite taking this, the woman has a right to keep the child if it is there. Correct? Correct, Your Honor. And the child has the right to live. Correct? Of course, Your Honor. But the RH law, which is a duty to protect the life and the health of the mother and the child, has not devised any specific protection to the right of the mother and the child in this particular situation, correct? Correct, Your Honor. Now, the insert further reads that this pill is contraindicated for use, contraindicated, makakasama, in women with liver disorders, clotting disorders, breast and cervical cancers, cancer, sickle cell anemia, the drug itself says this, huh? Hormone active tumors, hyperlipidemia, I don't know what that is, severe cardiovascular diseases, strokes, heart attack, previous or existing thromboembolic disease, and idiopathic jaundice. To be honest, I've never read a drug insert 
that presents as many risks to health as this has. So it would appear that this government-sponsored contraceptives mentioned in the law are, based on the claims of their manufacturer, not altogether safe. Do you agree with me? Yes, Your Honor. And if I may add, the effect of the RH law, considering the risk that you mentioned, is actually to institutionalize those risks because it is being sponsored no less than by government. Okay. The strategy of the family planning program under the RH law is to reach the poor and marginalized who are the ones facing housing, food, medical, and educational problems. You agree? I agree, Your Honor. Actually, the target of this is not those with money, <clears throat> because those with money can, can send their children to school and give them good education and feed them well and give them housing and everything that they need. So the target here is the poor. To reduce the size of the poor, to make lesser poor, lesser poor people in this country. You agree with that? I agree, Your Honor. Now, will the women in the slums have the chance of getting medical tests and examinations to determine, I'm sorry, to determine if they have the health disorders in this list. The woman in the slum would debate the capability, the chance to determine he suffers from these things, to avoid taking them. Do you think so? No, I don't think so, you know. <laughs> well, they have no money to buy food. So how can they get this test? So, does the RH law require compulsory testing of proposed users to prevent fatal results? if these contraindications, contraindications are present? No, Your Honor. It does not. Buyer company is reported to have set aside more than one billion to settle valid claims that their hormone drugs approved by the FDA has caused illness to a broad number of users. Buyer already admits that, that is produced Contraceptives approved by, by FDA. So you cannot say the court has to rely on the approval of FDA to say they're dangerous season. It's not so, it's not as easy as that. And the US, the, by the US FDA, okay. Does the law, does the RH law provide for remedy of recovery of damages? against contraceptive manufacturers like this one in Thailand, which is not under the jurisdiction of our FDA and its small distributor in the Philippines? Does the law have protection against that? No protection, Your Honor. Buyer, you can sue buyer, but... May I say something? Partner, <laughs> the insert says, take one tablet a day without interruption for 28 days or as directed by a healthcare provider, a healthcare provider, but down the line it says, consult a healthcare provider for a medical and gynecological examination before starting. You think the poor in the slum has this chance to get a medical and gynecological examination before starting? No, Your Honor. This pill requires prior to use medical and gynecological examination, obviously by competent physicians specializing in the matter, not the healthcare, you know, healthcare provider in the center, you know, in the health center. Okay. Unlike most sensitive medicines we are using, medical pack contains, containing this pill, this one, does not carry the restriction that it needs to be prescribed by competent physician. None. I've gone through it. There's nothing that says that it should be prescribed by a competent physician. Although sabi niya sa kanyang literature, 
They should be examined by the physician before use. Huh? They should undergo several tests before use. But it does not say you know, that it can be prescribed only by physician. Does the RH law provide for restricted use of contraceptives with abundant contraindications? No, Your Honor. It does not. The insert also tells the user to take one tablet a day without interruption for 28 days or as, or, or as directed by a health care giver. This means, does it not, that the health care provider, not necessarily a physician, can change the timing and the dosage following the instruction here? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, does the RH law prohibit non-physicians from advising users about correct dosage? No, Your Honor. It is not. As a matter of fact, uh, it says to train them. I don't know how you can train them, uh, Barangay Healthcare, not to train them <coughs> to do a lot of these things, gynecological examination. Would not this law be constitutionally void for what it does not provide? considering the state's duty to protect and promote the right of women to health. Yes, I agree, Your Honor. Health, as Webster defines the term, means physical and mental well-being, freedom from disease, pain or defect. Health means normalcy of physical conditions. So women have the right to be free from government-sponsored sickness. Do you agree? I'm sorry, again? Women have the right to be free from government-sponsored sickness. Yes, Your Honor. Free from government-sponsored pain. Of course, Your Honor. Free from government-sponsored defect. Yes, Your Honor. Women have the right to have normal, normally functioning vital organs, correct? Yes, Your Honor. They have the right to walk in the park or in the malls in good health? Yes, Your Honor. Free of worries over contraceptives that the government had assured them are safe? Yes, Your Honor. Correct? Yes, Your Honor. Does the RH law comport us that those reins of modern birth control are nothing to fear about? Not by their word. We shouldn't rely, Your Honor. Can the government sponsor a family planning program that does not ensure the protection and promotion of women's right to health? No, I don't think so, Your Honor. Section 46 of Rule 130 of the Rules of Evidence Ito, the court cannot look uh, but sec Section 46 of Rule 130 of the Rules of Evidence states that a published treatise periodical or pamphlet on a subject of science is admissible as tending to prove the truth of the matter stated in it if the court would take judicial notice of the expertise of the author or authors. Yes, you, are you aware of that? Yes, Actually, the court has been, that's a practice in this court, to refer to journals that are widely accepted as by the profession where it belongs. Now, in medicine, this would be medical journals or reports of the highest reputation in the medical profession, correct? Correct, Your Honor. Let me just uh, uh, read uh, a few excerpts from these medical journals or reports from the International Union Against Cancer. After adjusting, it says, after adjusting for education level, body, ma body mass index, age, etc., breast cancer risk significant elevated in use of oral contraceptives before 25 years old and before 1971. That's an early study. Now, from the Journal of American Health Association, a recent report, 2009, third generation oral contraceptives, this is modern, bago na, containing desogestrel or gestodin compare the same risk of first ischemic stroke as second generation oral contraceptives containing what I told you to remember lebonogestrel which these <coughs> pills contain. 
from Mayo Clinic 2006 study. The use of oral contraceptives is associated with the risk of premenopausal breast cancer, especially with the with use before FFTF in Paru's women. And from the World Health Organization itself, its International Agency for Research on Cancer 2005 studies. Previously, it says, combined oral contraceptives have been determined to be carcinogenic to humans, but only primary liver cancer was specifically implicated. But the working group concluded that combined oral contraceptives altered the risk of several common cancers in women. They increase a woman's risk of cervical cancer, breast cancer, and liver cancer. Now, the RH law declares hormonal contraceptives, contraceptives as safe in view of medical evidence that they are not. Does this declaration serve to protect and promote women's right to life and to health? No, Your Honor. Poison, according to Webster, is a substance causing illness when eaten, drunk, or absorbed, even in small quantities. And illness is the opposite of health, correct? That's correct, yeah. Hormonal contraceptives, as we have seen, are essentially poison, since they cause illness or death, or makes women not healthy, normal, or well. Can Congress pass a law that that sponsors the use of poison to prevent childbirth? Of course not, Your Honor. But it does. It decrees, the law describes uh, these things as safe. In other words, the law has arbitrarily and falsely declared hormone contraceptives, intrauterine devices and de injectables, to be safe. Correct? Yes, under Section 9. Thank you very much.